recording, start the recording, switch screens. Alright guys, welcome back to, I guess, what's technically season two of Adiona. Uh, we took a uh, good long break there and uh, we're back with the crew of the Adiona. Uh, just a few quick announcements before we dive right in. Uh, the first announcement is, if you are unaware, uh, this coming Thursday, literally two days from right now, uh, I will be hosting a crossover special with a bunch of players from all of my games. It'll probably be a massive clusterfuck, but I think it'll be a good time overall. Uh, that's at 7 p.m. on my Twitch channel, uh, which if you don't know that already, I guess, hi, welcome Back. to my show. Um, but other than that, the only other announcement I have is that uh, we are sort of going to be playing with time in a weird way. So, yes, I'm aware that what we're doing probably causes bootstrap paradoxes, but... You know, timey wimey wibbly wobbly. Uh, so, for the players, as I was telling them, we're gonna start the game on start eight five eight five one six point nine. Now, what that means is that we open up with Havoc and Merrick. You guys are working together in the main science lab, and you are trying to figure out how to deal with the radiation problem. Uh, you have not encountered the Ralma Maven yet, which means you have not uh, even learned that the Muad exists, much less that there is a ship made of pure neutronium out there. And the other thing of note is that none of you remember the events of this Stardate Forward. The only person who remembers from this Stardate Forward is Commander Morgan. And how Commander Morgan wants to handle that is entirely up to him. But for the moment, we will cut to the uh, science lab where you have Havoc and you have Merrick. And you guys are doing something with Neutronium and take it away. Actually, uh, before we start, may I get a little clarification? Is this before or after the Neutronium energy experiment? This is before. So actually, I think it is literally the time when you do it is right now. Can we just say that we proceed through with the experiment as we had gone through thus far and then continue? Yeah, you can do that much. I just wanted to give you an option if you wanted to replay yeah. it or not. So what we did is we had subjected it to uh, Andromeda radiation, I guess we labeled it. Mm -hmm. And we found that there was a buildup of uh, energy inside the neutronium sample. We had placed it inside a force field and such for protection. Um, then we also then, well... Havoc had the idea of introducing an anti-neutrino wave, I guess, to see if we could see what influence that had, and it basically caused a release of the energy, not necessarily very quickly, but some kind of in initiated a process of releasing the stored energy in the neutronium. And I guess it would be neutrinos coming out, another radiation, is that correct? That would be about right, yeah. Um... Can we try, say, positrons or some other types of energy waves? I'm trying to understand, is it specifically just the Andromeda radiation, and it, does it always come out as ne neutrinos or just radiation when we release it? I would say that that is something you would have to work on for a while, um, but just for momentum's sake, if you want to roll me a control and a science at difficulty two, uh, you might get some momentum. Let's do. Merrick? There he goes. All right, well, you're not really getting conclusive results. Uh, the problem is, is that the more exotic radiation types you expose this neutronium to, the more muddied your results get. Uh, almost as if it, it's sort of like trying to test multiple chemicals at the same time. Um, it just it doesn't sterilize well, and you can't, quote-unquote, clean the uh, test subject like you would in any chemistry lab. So it, it gets to the point where you're just not getting useful data anymore. Okay. Um, can I think of a way to isolate it further? Uh, you 
can um, certainly start thinking of it, but we are actually going to cut somewhere else. Uh, I just have to find where the map of it is. Here it is. So we cut to three forward. Uh, Iha is not there. But uh, Commander Morgan, uh, you are sort of just sitting in uh, three forward, looking out at the, uh, the stars flying by, and you kind of come to yourself. You realize that everything that occurred, as I said, has happened. And you sort of maybe check the start date, and it's the start date that is in, for you, what would be the past. And for the moment, you're the only one here in this little lounge area. But uh, I thought I'd let you play that out a little bit. GM, one quick question. Yeah, what's Are, up? Is our momentum number reset? Ah, uh, yeah, your momentum should be zero at the moment. Roger, roger. Well, if that's the case, then I'm going to walk over to the nearest comm panel. I'm going to put my hand on it. I'm going to ask the computer if there's anybody else present on this deck. Uh, the computer chimes that there are approximately 15 other personnel on this deck because this deck is crew quarters. I, I would like to, I'm also going to ask for uh, an accurate head count to see if there's anybody on board or, or is missing from. Uh, go ahead and roll me a insight and command difficulty zero. So this should just get you straight momentum. Alrighty then. Uh, one more die. Ooh, might be. Yeah, it's been a while, so. It has been a while. Let's try this again. Let's put these two together. Oh, that didn't roll. Okay, wait, here we go. All right. Okay, so yeah, uh, you get two momentum. Uh, well, the good news, Morgan, is that everyone seems to be there. Uh, the only difference that you're noting is that Mayweather isn't anywhere in the ADO and the logs. In fact, pretty much your helmsman until you got to the Andromeda Galaxy was some random ensign. And when you actually picked up Iha for, uh, as a guide, she sort of became your uh, enlisted helm officer. But Mayweather no longer exists on the Adiona. I'm curious. I will... Still, um, still up on the comm panel. I'm going to quickly, you know, search in Federation record, see what I get if where he's currently stationed. If we have that information before we left for him, I mean, you would have a uh, a good amount of data. So you don't really say get his whole personal history and his whole mm -hmm. service record, but uh, you do find that Mayweather, instead of transferring to the Adiona, uh, ended up transferring at uh, transferring to a cargo ship of an unknown or not well unknown to me because i don't know the top of my head what the freighter classes are but basically he followed in his family line and picked up the freighter business well at least that gives me some comfort and i says well you know good for him if that's the case and um i'll probably leave three forward at that point and go to my personal quarters, where I'd begin to record a personal log under a security lock. Okay. So, uh, while he's doing that, we are going to go to the bridge. And I'll get rid of his token here in a second. So, up on the bridge, uh, Kalos, you are, you know, filling in your shift. Uh, the good news is, uh, for anyone who is concerned about uh, Lieutenant Zava, she still is on the ship. Uh, she's just filling beta shift. Uh, but Kalos, you're just doing your job. You're uh, sort of just monitoring uh, all tactical systems. And Captain, you're there. You're doing the Captain thing of just sort of sitting and waiting. Uh, Merrick, you're monitoring the sensors. And Iha is your helmsman, and she's in a Starfleet uniform now, and... As far as you all know, that's normal. I has in a uniform? Mm-hmm. She is uh, a crewman at this point. A crewman? Uh-huh. Ah, I'm yes, Kalos, really you did change your token. Oh, we'll, we'll fix that. Could have swore she'd be higher. Well, I mean, that's up to you. I mean, I, I put her as a crewman, but if you want her to be a higher enlisted, go for it. 
Well, not that. I mean, I'd at least have her as a lieutenant, considering she was a liaison. All right, sure. I mean, if you want to make her a full officer, that is your discretion as the captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's honor her position as liaison. If she's gonna, if she is, is she serving? Is, is do I know her as serving as a liaison officer or to officer exchange or something? Something like that, yeah. Um, she would not only be your helmsman, but she would be providing what knowledge she has of the Andromeda Galaxy for you. Yeah, she's an O3. Okay, alright, well, I'll edit her token as I uh, get Kalos set up here. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, but yeah, uh, so, uh, everything seems to be normal. Uh, you guys oh, one do... thing, oh, one yeah, of her forward. stats is around f uh, level 4, right? Uh, let me check. I think her con is. Yeah, her con is four. Um, yeah, she's definitely a lieutenant if she's got a four con. Okay. Um, I will say, since she is now taking over as your helmsman, uh, if you guys want to sit down and figure out, as the scenes play out, how to stat her up as a full character, uh, she needs three focuses, she needs four values, and she needs four talents. And then her attributes need to add up to 56, and her disciplines need to add up to 16. So I guess anyone who's not in the scene, or however you guys want to handle that, go right ahead. Um, but in the meantime, uh, Kalos, now that your token is correct, uh, you are detecting that there is an anomaly ahead of you. Uh, you're not able to get a bead on what the anomaly is, only that there's a strange amount of radiation ahead of you. Captain, there's a strange anomaly ahead, and there's some radiation coming from it. Okay, any more information than that, or is that all we can get uh, at this time? May I do a scan? You may certainly do a scan. If you want to do a sensors and security for the ship, and for you, it is a reason and security. Can I do it from a side standpoint? You may assist him, yes. So you may do a reason science. And you can only roll one die for the reminder. Right. And focus doesn't matter? Uh, focuses do apply. And uh, Kalos, you're rolling two. And who's getting the ship? It's okay, the ship. Okay, yeah, so ship is rolling sensor security for this one. All right, rolling now. All right, two successes. That's good. Astrometri really Astrometrics for focus? Yeah, that would apply. Whoa. Alright, that's up to three successes. Let's see if the ship gets you another one. Alright, so you guys get another two momentum. You're up to four. So yeah, between Merrick and Kalos, uh, you guys are able to determine that there is what appears to be some form of graviton catapult that is operating in the system ahead of you. And this um, system is uh, more or less, I'm trying to remember if I named it or not. Um, this system is, if you remember way back when we first did the catapult episode, this is that same system. Uh, the big difference is, is that uh, the catapult is already built and there are several smaller Muat ships already in the area. But of course, you don't know who the hell the Muat are. On screen. Zoom in. Yeah. So of course, you see the uh, you see the Neutronium vessels just sort of doing their own thing, traveling throughout the system, going in and out of the catapult, and yeah, that's that's what you see at this distance. You would have to get closer and or make contact to learn more. Captain, the system appears to be occupied by a um, spacefaring race. You Wait, he cut out there. Yeah, I was going to say, I think else? you cut out for everyone there. I wasn't sure if that was me. Uh, I just said, Captain, the space ahead seems to be occupied by a spacefaring race. What are your orders? They're using some kind of a catapult system. Uh, can we focus it so I don't get any telemetry on where these these ships are going? Uh, on it, sir. And Iha, you know, does her best as a navigator and says, I'm detecting that 
if this is right, that they are literally launching themselves. That That is a significant distance, sir. Uh, let's just say we're looking at the ballpark of... Let me double check my figures real fast. Uh, yes, 3,000 light years away is where they're sending things to and from this catapult. Coreward, spinward, which way we're going? Spinward. Not sure I'm comfortable with that large of a detour. How far away is it? Uh, the system itself uh, that you're heading towards? Uh, no, the the catapult itself. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. The the system where the catapult is. Um, yeah, the, yeah. I would say you could div divert with QSD and be there in a matter of minutes. Uh, or uh, you could simply bypass it and continue on your merry way. Is there a chance of us being detected by these other ships if they haven't seen us already? That would be Kalos's probably professional opinion there. Possibly, sir. Hi, how is this familiar to you at all? Uh, no, I, I can't really say I recognize the make of their vessels or really the technology at play here. But, I mean, if they're able to just willy-nilly travel 3,000 light years in an instant... That's that's tremendous. I, I'd like to get a look at it. Let's see. Uh, let me do some brainstorming on this one. Uh, comms, give me the give me the. Show. I think you cut out there. I don't know if it's just me, but uh, who did you want to get a hold of? Uh, comms, give me the ship, please. One MC. Okay. So, uh, the ensign who's filling in for Morgan, uh, establishes you a, a, uh, contact with the vessel ahead of you, and sure enough, uh, on the screen appears, if I can find where the hell I put his token, uh, appears what would be, for certain people, uh, a familiar face. And he identifies himself, and he says, This is Commander Tarud of the Muat Ascendancy. Who might you be? Uh, this is Captain Williams of the USS Starship Andromeda. Oh, sorry. I think I've got my ships confused here. Give me. It's been a while. <laughs> Adiona. Yeah, the Adiona Andromeda. I don't know where I got Andromeda from. Whatever. I mean, you are in the Andromeda Galaxy, so... You have, yeah, you have yeah, yeah. Too many too many A names in one sentence. And I've, I have been imbibing a bit off, uh, out of character. All right. So, uh, uh, go ahead. So, yeah, I'd say uh, this is Captain Williams of the USS Starship Andromeda. We have uh, recently come across the ship traffic in the area and just inquiring as to the general knowledge of the area. Ah, well, we are detecting that you are headed towards us at a tremendous speed. Uh, if you would care to slow down and join us in system, we would be happy to uh, share information with you. Sounds good. Uh, can you provide a rendezvous coordinate by chance? Of course, and IHA reports, uh, sir, I, I have a set of rendezvous coordinates in hand. Right, and, uh, and I figure she gives me the estimated time to arrive there, and I will pass that on to Karanda Tarud, and I'll say, uh, happy to see you. Very good. Commander Tarud out. Very well. Captain, recommend we bring Alpha Shift to the bridge? Yeah, yeah that's the other thing I was going to call for. So uh, give me the ship and notify senior officers to meet me in the conference In the conference room? Okay. Correct. Cut to the conference room. So before we cut to the conference room, sure. I can I say tokens anyway? Yeah. Before we cut to the conference room, I'd like to. Um, I'd assume at this point, after all of those that was going on, I'd be able to finish recording my my security log. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'd get the no he'd get the uh, the uh, crew notification whenever he's done roughly mm -hmm. in the script. Okay, then if that's the case, while I'm on my way to the conference room, I'd like to defer to sick bed. To sick bay. All right, uh, we'll cut there then, because sick bay is uh, more interesting than the conference room. All right, so uh, Andromeda isn't there, but uh, Galen, you're doing Galen things when uh, out of the blue, 
In walks Commander Morgan. Hello, Doctor. Uh, Galen's actually offline. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> if that's the case, well, computer, can we please activate our uh, medical holiday? He activates, unless he decides he really doesn't want to deal unless with it. Unless he really doesn't want to show up today. <laughs> Which is his choice, I suppose. He has rights. He'll just tilt his head and say to you, in a very quizzical look, please state the nature of a medical emergency. Doctor, I have to ask you a personal question. And this needs to be kept between us, you and me. Very well, Dr. Patient Confidentiality is understood. If there was ever a need for you to reintegrate your matrix with a copy of yourself, how would exactly would that be done? And could it be done quickly without any difficulty? He motions out his left arm, and as he does so, a copy of him walks out of himself, and then another copy from his copy walks out of himself, and he just they all look at you. Like it's quite easily. They integrate their data and sensory input that they've been given into me. And then it's like a copy, a file. One that says Monday. Another one says Monday 1, Monday 2. I just access their available information. Well, I can understand that has a party trick, but let's assume that the premise relies on temporal science. Temporal science. If you were time shifted and you had to reintegrate a, a matrix within yourself again, would you think there would be any difficulties? Assuming that one of those copies were undamaged. It's theoretically possible. It's like the, the black box version of my program. While it may not be sentient, if something were to happen to me, it could be merged within my program. Uh, to repair any damage, even if it's only been activated once uh, years earlier. But would there be anything necessary for you to prep for reintegration if the program was possibly heavily damaged? Uh, I'd have to review the program, see if what type of damage there is, see if it's even worth attempting integration. Uh, there is a small chance that a cascade failure could happen, and I am rendered default. I will not cease to function, it's my person would cease, if that makes any sense. Are we talking about a loss of sentience or loss of personality? To me that's one and the same, but sentience, the drive to be more than what I am, to protect my crew, that may just be revered back to a program an aspiration or a desire. I am highly fascinated though into attempting this. Is this an experiment you wish to run? Well, the boys down in the science lab have been throwing out a bunch of crazy ideas recently, so that's just something that I wanted to fuel the bane. And that's all. But in any case, I'd rather we not discuss this with the rest of the crew. It's just uh, something that I don't really want. I don't really think that it's really Something that everybody else needs to know at the moment. Not that there's anything going for it. I'm just going to raise a Vulcan-like eyebrow at him. Like, very well. I will keep this between us. Um, is there anything else, though? Is there any medical need? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm good to go. As soon as Morgan hears him trying to suggest a medical procedure on him, he's going to start backing out. Sick day. Well, have a good day, Commander. You know where you to find me. After I leave sick bay, I'd like to tell the computer to update my log. And in the case of the emergency, the log that I most recently recorded, I'd like it to be sent to our doctor. Game. Alrighty, noted. And yeah, with that. Let's say you all adjourn in the conference room. And there you go. Uh, no, I heard uh, you fine, Galen. 
Uh, I don't know if we're ro roboting or if it's uh, if it's you or me or. I just Discord's showing them red. Huh. Well, I mean, you you're coming through fine. Uh, let me let me switch to service real fast. I uh, know it's it's anthem. It's still downloading for some reason. Oh yeah, that you know if you're streaming in the background, there you go. Yeah, that's your problem trying to download that track. I'm the sorry. Gamer crack. Trash. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! All right, but all of you are in the conference room now, and uh, while some of you know what's going on, uh, Andromeda, Morgan, Havoc, where the hell is Galen? Galen, you're here too. As soon as I find where the hell your token is, there it is. Why are you over there? Well, you're My there now. <laughs> the chair and I materialize. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> we. All right, there you guys go. All righty, glad you all could make it. Uh, just to bring you up to speed, this shouldn't take too long, but it looks like we've uh, made contact with a species I don't think any of us have seen before, the Muat. Uh, just wanted to give you the update uh, of that encounter. We're destined to rendezvous with them as soon as we arrive. Uh, and to uh, prepare your stations for any protocols we may need to take in, uh, for first contact, including scanning, you know, uh, restricted scanning. We don't want to scare them off. Uh, without them knowing about it and any customs courtesies or anything else you may be able to think of re in regards to your respective departments i on the, would on the display screen in the room i bring up the uh images that we had of the system the ships and the uh person that hailed up all right so that appears uh over the conference table for all to see i would recommend sending over our biological readings to them so they know um, what we are and we can request the same for them just in case if they're not able to breathe our atmosphere or vice versa. So noted. A small question. Did we ever get uh, what their technology level is and what their ships are made of? I don't think they're close that... enough for a detailed scan yet. You would know that they're made out of neutronium which is a pretty big deal. And they're using the, uh, what did you refer to it, the jump technology? Uh, the Graviton Catapult. Yep. So they have ne neutronium ships. Oh boy. That's oh. what initially caught our attention was the readings from the neutronium, or at least the catapult. I, I need a sample of their tech. That's going to haunt my nightmares if I don't get any. Yeah, so noted. Uh, and now I guess I'll gesture to Andromeda if she doesn't have any anything to add. Uh, it's like, Andromeda, were there any questions you may have by chance? Uh, or if we should dodge these guys or anything else? I mean, I'm, I'm not really remembering anything about a species known as the Muat. Uh, I, I think it's fascinating from a scientific point of view that they're made out of neutronium, their ships anyway, but uh, sorry, I, I got nothing on this. All right. Just wanted to make sure we gave you the opportunity just in case. Sure. Um, do you want me present for any of the proceedings, or should I stay out of your way? I mean, this, this pretty much is a Federation first contact thing. I, I don't want to be a burden. I guess uh, if they ask for, do you want to be included if they ask for a tour? Let uh, me rephrase your question. I mean, that is entirely up to you, Captain, but I think it would be remiss if we're being completely honest with these people that they're going to want to know why, you know, the Federation and Starfleet are here in the first place. Well, I figured I could handle that, but as long as you didn't have any objections, if they happen to come by sickbay, I, I guess there's no reason not to include you in the sickbay tour, is what I'm getting. Oh. Uh, I guess it well, uh, turns to uh, Galen at that point and says, well, Doctor, I, I guess I'm going to be rooming in sickbay for a little bit. What well, I mean, isn't that where she's normally helping out if she is, is in sickbay? I mean, sometimes. Uh, it's not like on Arcadia where she was in there almost 24-7. Uh, here, she's just sort of around the ship. Uh, yeah, we've just pretty much included her as a quote-unquote guest. So. Mm -hmm. 
Captain, one of the primary reasons we're here in Andromeda is to bring her home, and we've yet to come across any significant information regarding Andromeda, the person here. Perhaps they're, they could help us with this. They are uh, the first widespread species because that, that gate, jump gate technology must take them great distance. Could also be a generational type thing. They launch a ship, they take a few generations to return home. Or they could be very long lived. Both, 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 both to our advantage, actually. Well, while we speculate, I do suggest we transfer information so we get some more evidence and information on them. I'm sure they'll have a bunch of questions for us and we'll have some for them. Hmm. Hmm. I guess I'll think about that particular option a little bit longer. But as long as there is nothing, any other uh, questions from the departments, I'll take that as a no. All righty, meeting adjourned. All right. So at this point, uh, the Adiona has dropped out in the system and is headed towards the rendezvous coordinates. And at this point, they have sent over uh, their sort of medical readings, as Galen has suggested. Uh, as far as you're able to tell Galen, uh, they can survive in your atmosphere and vice versa, but they are a, uh, they are a silicon based life form. So probably not a good idea to start, try and use, you know, carbon based medicine on them if need be. Um, uh, but they are requesting clearance to land a shuttle in the shuttle bay. There's not much room there. <laughs> we yeah, as long as they fit the size requirements, no need to deny them. I mean, it, it'll I be a tight squeeze, but for thematic sake, yeah, you can fit them in there. Narratively speaking, I would prefer if they would uh, beam over. Well, uh, something that would occur to you, because it's been a while, uh, if you remember, uh, the Muat don't really have transporter technology. Because neutronium. Oh, we're still, yeah, never mind. That is that is a thing. I, it's it's it's. I gotta I gotta play catch up. Well, I mean that, with that's, the time stream. With the time stream, I mean with the time stream. Damn yeah, you, say. super physics. <laughs> so I guess the question I have is, who's actually going down to meet uh, whoever this delegation of Muat is? Uh, well, the captain's definitely going, and okay. as the EXO is the, the more of the uh, uh, diplomat than I am, then he's coming because that's. <laughs> and then, uh, and then whoever else, I guess the ship engineer. Other than that, it's optional. All right. I would, I would appreciate it. I'd rather order Kalos to be there. Okay. Not, not necessarily in an official security presence, but more so a detached, you know, it's first contact. I'll stay on the bridge, conduct detailed scans. All right. So we cut to the shuttle bay. And as, uh, as you sort of watch as the sort of external doors open of the shuttle bay and the force field flickers to life, uh, you see the Muat shuttle fly in. And it very gracefully sets down in what area remains in the shuttle bay. And out of it comes a, well, to you, Morgan, someone familiar. Uh, you see an individual that uh, is typical Muat, and since it's been a while, uh, Muat are basically sort of beings of energy or beings of sort of bright, uh, sort of lava-like consistency can, uh, covered by a metallic shell. Uh, humanoid in design, and uh, what's really important, though, is that when this individual steps out of his sort of trapezoidal uh, shuttle, he kind of looks around, he sees you, Captain, he sees you, Morgan, and immediately when he sees Morgan, uh, he starts laughing, and he says, Ah, Commander Morgan! I didn't expect to ever see you again. <laughs> I give a very, very worried look at Morgan. Do you have something to explain, Commander Morgan? Your captain's puzzled. <laughs> at this point, there's not really any point in that keeping it a secret anymore. 
So at that at that point, I'll just respond to Pearl. It has been a while, hasn't it? Yes, fifty years, in fact. We have a, a lot to discuss. It, it, just to just to get things out of the way now. How is my doctor? Oh, uh, obviously, I didn't think it would be you, but I did bring him along, and he pulls out uh, what to anyone else looks like a one of Galen's kind of hollow armband things. And he tosses it to you, Morgan, and says, he went offline a few years back, but I'm pretty sure you could probably recover him with this. Uh, honestly, we, we never really figured out holograms. Uh, it wasn't anything recorded in our uh, our data trove. I understand. But in any case, this 50 years have treated you well. I am an ambassador now, and we've made contact with countless other species. In fact, you are number, and he thinks for a moment, number 15. Though I guess well, technically you're number one as well. And he, he would wink if he could wink, but, it, you know, winking it really isn't in something he can do. Captain Williams folds his arms. Glaring, I am glaring daggers at Commander Morgan. I shrug. <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, Commander Morgan, care to introduce us? Captain Williams, uh, Havoc, uh, Lieutenant Commander Gallus, this is uh, Pru. In fact, most of you have already met him 50 <laughs> years ago. Why do I have no recollection of this then? Of course we did. Uh, we calm down, folks. Let's get these. Uh, Officially, official actions out of the way, and I'll go up and greet uh, Prulish. Okay. He uh, extends a hand and says, uh, Captain Williams, if I recall correctly, it is a pleasure to see you again. Uh, same to you, I think. Yes. Uh, have you grown out your facial hair? It seems a bit more robust than I remember. Not more than usual. Oh, huh. my mistake then. And uh, he kind of looks past you at Havoc and Kalos and says, Uh, you I sort of remember. Uh, you'll have to accept my apologies. Uh, was it Mayhem? Havoc. Havoc. But close enough. And you were... He thinks for a moment. I don't think I actually ever got your name. So again, my apologies. I guess he's referring to Kalos. Yes, to Kalos. That's fine. It's Kalo Kalos or Kalos. You can pronounce it either way. Most people mess it up on their first introductions. Wait, cool. did you say Kalos? You can pronounce it K K Kalos, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone messes it up. Kalos, that's great. Well, uh, Prulish sort of claps his hand together and says, so, where shall we meet first? Well, I'll uh, gesture for him to proceed and I'll lead him to the conference room. Alright. So, I think it's probably safe to say that on the way there, there's many questions waiting to be answered. Yeah, I expect a walk and talk. Okay. Alright, so you guys can walk and talk as I get the conference room set up. Well, in that case... Um, I'll explain to everybody in the party, well, every, every, all, all the other officers that there was a temporal incident, and I was unable to talk about it because of the temporal prime directive, but considering that Perlish has knowledge of these events, there's no longer a reason to necessarily keep it from the rest of the crew. So I'll give them the long and short of it, um... Well, let's, I'll let's make it a thing. Be very clear about what you are saying to them. Oh, I, I will be very specific. I will say that Q was involved. And that we initiated first contact in a way to ensure that things would actually go smoothly more than one time around. And that's, I, 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 that's basically all I would say. 
We were so friendly that we had to meet him twice. Okay. You know, I'm not sure if I really want to know anything more than that. I'm not really sure you can. <sighs> Fair enough. I'm assuming that brings me to the conference room. Yeah, at this I'll point. I'll gesture uh, for him to go there in. There we go. You guys are back in the conference room. So, at this point, I would actually, you know, ask the computer to uh, notify uh, Galen to materialize in the conference room. All right. So, Galen, you get a ping from the computer that your presence is needed in the conference room. Uh, sure. He'll materialize, and he'll be in uh, a golfer's uniform. With a... Hi. <laughs> well, Wait, you're I... in what uniform? Golf. Even I show up the job in the right uniform. One second, and he'll just quickly change. He was like, I, technically, it was my break. Technically, you're on duty, and I have a present for you. Remember our talking sick bay? He's just raising another eyebrow at you? As he's raising the eyebrow, that's when I toss him his armband. Galen, you were provided your own armband. The one you are wearing, or would be wearing, right now. Okay, how old does it look? Oh, it looks like it's seen better days. I mean, this, this is 50 years of wear and tear on a planet that's not exactly the uh, most hospitable to life or at least carbon-based life, so it looks rusted, it looks like someone has tried to make repairs on it. There's... It's really hard to say without literally taking it to Havoc or to an engineering bay and going, all right, what can we pull off of this? You know, how active it would remain. Oh, no way to uh, get to connect to the ship right now? To transfer uh, program? No, uh, you're definitely going to have to do... It would be the equivalent of, like, a, a hard drive controller dying. So you have to literally open up a hard drive, put in a new controller, something like that. That's an engineering fix right there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I will attempt to get this working as soon as possible. Am I needing here for this? Or can I go attempt to repair? Uh, well, if you have no questions for our guests, can you send another science officer in your stead in case we need any uh, information? Like Nurse Dara or something like that? I can send Nurse Crew. Um, you mentioned science, though. Would uh, Merrick not be better? Well, Merrick, well, somebody from your division. I just want coverage. I don't plan on going through anything in detail without permission. Very well. Um... I'll hold off for now, and I will see what needs permission for. And Galen will just sit down, just keep an eye on that armband. All right. It just sits on the table, menacingly. Does it chirp like a tribble? Yes. It is <gasps> now a tribble. No, it's not a tribble. It's not a tribble. <laughs> I would fucking immediately destroy it. <laughs> not even joking. I would be like, attack immediately. We're not having. Alrighty, so uh, Prulish, uh, I've seen that we got quite a bit of traffic going through your gate there. Uh, what's the status quo of the system that you can share with us? Well, uh, this is what we'd like to call the foothold, or some also call it the Great Landing. Uh, long and short of it is, is that, as Morgan probably has told you by now, side note, Morgan, you haven't, uh, we were able to leave the garden 50 years ago, thanks to your help, and this has sort of been our, quote-unquote, home base of operations outside of the garden since then. We haven't really traversed too far from this system, because we can only set up but so many catapults, but we have a operational area of about two light years out from this central point. So you're partaking in peaceful exploration then. Have all your first contacts been smooth? Well, uh, there was the encounter with what we referred to as Species 4, 
Uh, we never really got their names. They were, shall we say, very confrontational. Uh, luckily, they couldn't put a scratch on our ships, but instead of wanting to talk, they literally just shot at us until they got bored and left. How long ago did this encounter take place? Uh, let me think. That would have been something like 37 years ago. We haven't encountered them since. Ever since you realized that there was a life beyond the veil, how has your, uh, how's the structure of your society changed? Well, uh, after seeing the uh, Dorni, the Dorhini, uh, Andromeda, we were sort of revitalized. It was a scientific boom. Uh, I believe your Galen once told us that it was similar to the human uh, design or desire to suddenly go from space or from normal aircraft flight to landing on your moon. Well, I'm happy to see that at least it gives you a sense of direction that we can all appreciate. Was there any discourse or pushback uh, within your own people to wanting to explore? Well, there were some at first that were very concerned with the fact that the Dorhini had returned and we were not properly venerating them. But given uh, Galen's actions and the data that Andromeda left behind... Uh, let's just say that they were very quickly silenced. Not, not sinisterly, I should clarify, but it was made rather very clear that we would not slip back into the religious zealots that we could have been. Well, and that's good to hear. At this point, I'm going to have to ask you a, uh, personal favor, Brutish. I... I mean, after all you've done, I, I think that's fair. What, what do you have in mind? The Dorney Andromeda is still aboard our ship right now. With your permission, I'd appreciate it if we had the ability to return to your planet, but not attract the fanfare that we might have had the first time. There's still a bit of many unanswered questions that I feel like we still need the time to explore. But I'd like to do that in a more controlled setting his head kind of tilts to the side a little bit and says ah right uh is it if i'm guessing correctly you wish for her to interface with the dorhini data cache yes i would indeed well i have further good news we now carry a copy of that cache on every single one of our ships so all she would need to do is come over to my ship and she could interface with it there that is actually wonderful i appreciate that very much and it's probably about this time that Prulish has realized that Morgan's doing most of the talking and no one else has really said anything and says, um, I'm sensing the fact that perhaps you all need a little bit to catch up. Um, could I get a tour from one of your crewmen, perhaps? Uh, sure. Uh, stand by just one moment. Uh, and I'll hit my combat and go, uh, this, uh, Nurse Keru, this is the captain. Please report to the conference room as soon as possible. Sure. And after a thematically appropriate amount of time, uh, Keru shows up and uh, says, Right this way, Leader Prulish. And uh, the two of them will depart, leaving the rest of you to glare angrily at one Captain Morgan. Or Commander Morgan. Sorry, I almost promoted you. <laughs> yeah, not the way he's going. <laughs> Just wait till Thursday. <laughs> Commander, I have a simple question to ask you. I'm listening. Did I at, at all at least mention the Temporal Prime Directive to you? Mm, once or twice. Excellent. Captain, may I be excused? I wish you could work on this now. By all means. Thank you. And Gator will walk out because he can't hop around the <laughs> ship with a physical item. <laughs> well... Uh, if I'm left alone in a conference room with angry Starfleet officers, I'll at least begin my sentence with saying, honestly, this is probably a very bad joke, but I thought I had more time. You thought you, uh, what was that? You cut off right at the end. I thought I had more time. 
Uh-huh. Well, considering <laughs> I don't know what you needed more time for, I still kind of in the dark here. I've just been kind of going with it since things would be going pretty smoothly for this first contact, I think. What I'm about to reveal is obviously in direct violation of the Temporal Prime Directive, but stop, considering... Stop, stop, stop. But... I'm, going the, I'm going to go over to the replicator. <laughs> is, is it pie time? No, this it's... is synthahol time. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll, as much as you can get, please. <laughs> yeah, I'll get a picture and share it with the rest of the, of the, the bridge staff in the conference room. All right. And with with three glasses with ice in it, and once everybody's gotten their drink, and I sit down, I'll I'll pour one for the 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 commander too, but he can't drink yet. He's got to talk first. So now I go, okay, now you may please proceed. So we've been here before in this entire situation. We've met the Muat. We've met Prulish. Uh, we've done the whole shebang, and it did not go well. Q offered us a do-over, and wait, the... wait, you made a deal with the Q. I wouldn't really call it a deal. More so, there was a glaring opportunity between two choices, and one was better than the other. Hey, the don't, else... don't interrupt the commander. Please finish your statement, and then we'll make judgment. <laughs> the alternative was most assuredly religious elytry. On our first attempted first contact with the Muat, it went poorly from all things involved, from the away mission to initial diplomatic proceedings to, to religious elytry and especially with the reveal of Andromeda. Uh, I decided it was best, and I made the command decision, along with the opportunity that Q presented us, to re to have first contact take place 50 years prior to the Muat leaving their system, giving us enough up giving us enough opportunity and uh, to be able to be the first things that they see, and probably to encounter it to, for them to encounter alien life at a different at a different at a different part of their society where they'd be more easy where they would be more susceptible to societal change okay my first trick is finished anybody else need a refill no i'm good okay i'm gonna refill my drink of synth hall <laughs> i would have preferred to have uh kept this on a possibly need-to-know basis, which is why I intercepted Galen prior to today's events. However, I also left a detailed log explaining the outcome of the mission that I will most likely share with all of you now. Okay. Captain, I'm sorry that you had to figure this out, and this had to happen this way. No. no. Well, I'm not so much concerned about the actions as if to say, what were the results of this action on Q side of this little deal? To be quite honest, I'm still trying to piece out what results will probably happen for her on her end. Or what benefits that she has gotten out of this. Hey Morgan, roll me a challenge die, please. Wonderful. Joy. His brain starts to melt. Hugh appears in the Warning. room with two triples. Incoming game. Warning. <laughs> Incoming game. <laughs> How many die? I actually uh, looked around at my computer for a second. <laughs> well, Q doesn't show up, but a triple does. And it I just sits there in the middle of the table purring. I immediately grab the triple with my robot arm and shove it into like a bag or something, some somewhere where we can keep it under locks. I down my Andorian ale. Wait, you don't have Andorian ale. You have Synthahol. You're on duty. No, I asked for Andorian ale, Captain. Uh, yeah, you're not getting Andorian ale when you're on duty. Well, the replicator <laughs> gave it to me. Just mind you, it's it's not a my reaction to the triple is not even skipping a beat. It's literally, it appears, I grab it, I shove it in some bag or something, I don't know. What, what do we got up here that I can shove it in? 
Well, the good news is when you actually grab it, you find out that it's not a real triple. It's literally a plushie. Oh, say... I actually look up at the sky. Q, do not do that to me again. My cybernetic heart can't handle it. At this point, I think it's safe to say that the game is still underfoot. So we have no clue what she's getting out of her end then, is that correct? No, but I do... I, But I will say... I lived through the alternative. It was it was worse. We completely destroyed a society which we had no. no, no I'm business. not arguing your decision. I'm just trying to make sure I know what's on the other side of this math problem. So if it's a variable, then it's a variable. I'm just trying to make sure I got all the facts. Morgan, I want wow. to look. I'm assuming my statement is correct. Is that correct, it, Commander, Commander Morgan? It, no, it, oh, Commander Morgan at this point will just shrug and just say, yeah. yeah. More yeah or that less. sounds like a variable. Which okay, I'm going to finish my glass. I was say, Callus, it seems like you're typing. What you got on your mind there, buddy? All I was going to ask, Commander, is what's done is done. We can't change what you've done. But what have you done? <laughs> what has been changed or altered well i think he covered that pretty well looks like we had a religious incident with our first contact and it's been averted i'm going to take the rest of the synth hold back to the replicator and have it reclaim all right all righty well if we don't have any more details to share I'm going to go back to the bridge and await the, the result of the tour, if you don't mind. Now, I won't... May I have a few minutes to just chew Commander Morgan out a little bit for something I find personally annoying? Well, considering he's higher ranked than you, I'm not sure you'll be able to do so. But by all means, go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to go to leave, then go to... Alright, some uh, captain steps out. Uh, Callus, are you <laughs> sticking around, or...? I'm just going to get another Andorian nail. <laughs> now he's getting drugged. Uh, can you get that from the replicators? Yeah, the replicator gave it to me. Yeah. No, no, uh, I mean, can... I, I, okay, canonically, can you get Andorian nail from the uh, Let's just say that it's more Synthahail than it is Andorian ale, but he Yeah, that's what I difference. thought. You can't get full strength ale out of the replicators. Yeah. I mean, that's it's one of those things where you can still get a buzz, but you could shake it off if you really put your mind to it. Yeah, which means it's not really Endorian Ale. So, you well, know. maybe he doesn't know that. Maybe he's not up to date on replicator technology. It's or kind he's of a never placebo. had real Endorian Ale. One yeah. of the two. It, it's kind of like soy. He's been green. drinking near beer his whole life, and he doesn't know it. Exactly. I'm eating. I'm eating Endorians. Is that what you're trying to say? And tell me. <laughs> yes. <you've been laughs> yes. There's a Endorian in every ale. Yes. Anyways, uh, so you get another one. All right, Havoc, you have. Uh, Kalos and you have Morgan here. What do you want to do? Alright. Commander Morgan, there's one thing I find more annoying than you messing with the temporal prime directive and possibly causing a time paradox. The fact you didn't bring any information about their neutronium back! That's what you're concerned about? Yes. I'm an engineer. I know that. But that's the big concern? Do you see me yelling any other concerns? I take a sip. Havoc's triple plushy purrs. And I better see that Havoc tri that, that plushy triple on your character sheet. I will check later. Because if it's not, okay, the problem will be on bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only half joking. Well, Commander Morgan is honestly... He's... he's, he's it's kind of... He he's entertaining the idea, but he's also kind of out of things to say. So I'll just respond and just say, "Well, I'm sorry. There wasn't exactly enough time. Can you, you had please? an entire time paradox to do it <laughs> with the puns, Commander. You know, there's only uh, so much you can do in a day and fifty years. All right, I'm leaving." <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get up and leave. <laughs> I, 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 I yell in the hallway. The situation is too punny. <laughs> I, I still give Commander Morgan look. It's just like you had an entire time paradox to just 
nab something. If you're going to break the temporal prime directed, break it with some balls. Oh, I mean, you can, I mean, we can always ask, you know who. But I, I don't think that situation is, is good for anyone involved. Well, next time you break the temporal prime directive, you better tell me about it. I hate being in the dark, and I hate not knowing what tech we're going to encounter next. Or, 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 and hear me out here, we can attempt first contact the right way, and maybe you actually will get a chance to study these neutronium that the good people have all over. You're saying they have a lot of this stuff. I'm saying that it's a possibility that if we play our cards right, you may be able to find things out that you might not have expected before, like you already have today. Does this include stuff I already learned, and because your time paradox, I don't have? I'm just saying that the journey hasn't it hasn't ended yet. So stick around. I uh, and keep a I level see. head. I squeeze the triple with a little bit of annoyance, considering he's trying to be obtusely cryptic and leave with the triple in hand. Alright. So, uh, let's cut to engineering. Because I figure that's where Galen would go with uh, his uh, reclaimed armband, is that about right? Uh, that or one of the hollow labs. I'd, I'd probably say that main engineering is probably best and am i about right that you activate the eeh yep all right so you can talk to yourself or i can run the eeh whichever you'd prefer please state the nature of the engineering oh hello brother hello monty i have a piece of technology that i think will provide us a challenge oh that's one of your armbands is it not yes it's uh 50 years old, and it's in need of uh, some repair. Apparently there's a duplicate of me on there. It, someone... Time travel? Really? Yes, it was some time travel. Uh, apparently Commander Morgan had caused something, but I'm sure you'll find more about it if we reactivate myself. Okay, well... Put him on the diagnostic lab. Uh, I'm only good with computers. My specialty is that thing. Like, yes, yes, the quantum slipstream drive, I know, but I figured two heads are better than one. We're based off the same model. Yes, I... It's a figure of speech. If you had some sentience, you say I'm not sentient. I yeah, guess it's maybe... Right about that, that <laughs> if you walk in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see the clown party has already started. Well, the circus leader is here. Sorry. Indeed, he is. <laughs> it's like, <sighs> Chief, could Not you look at you, Galen. Okay. Monty, Chief, please. I I want to get some answers and give it's... me the damn device, and I'll have it fixed. You'll grab it from Monty and give it to Havoc. All right, so it's Havoc, big count. roll of today, because it's a very important roll. I'm spending threat on it. Difficulty 5 task, complication range 16 to 20, literally the hardest task possible in the system. Jesus Christ. You have four momentum. You have your determination. How do you want to do this? I am out of character suggestion. Maybe you should try to do that as an extended task. Well, even, I do as extended, extended even as an extended task, it would still be like a difficulty four to start with. Uh, so you have the option. You can either do an extended piercing. task or which. So let's 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 lay it out. So if you do it the extended task way, it will take time and it will be at a lower difficulty. But the key thing is, as we keep making time puns, it will take time. If you do the difficulty five. You basically are a miracle worker and make a rock into a replicator, and it works. So it's hmm. whichever, whichever way you would prefer to approach the situation. Okay, looking, looking at what I have, I do have cautious engineering, so if I do want to hail Mary this, I could, mm -hmm. potentially. But I also have Nick of Time, which would actually make the extended task easier.
I can also activate my alternate subroutines and bring up Hollow Specialist. Hey, I will uh, blatantly out of character metagame right now. Go for it. And suggest that you may want to ask Morgan for help. For assistance, at least, with this task. So the one or thing burn, I'll say uh, that, Or burn determination if one of your values holds skill. That's... Yeah, I was going to say, so determination probably needs to come to play here. And the one thing I'll say is that only one person can assist you on this. So pick whichever you believe to be the most effective. And I will AKA say that the Havoc, best dice luck. Yeah, I was gonna say, so let's let's break it down into game mechanics turns. So Havoc, you would be rolling uh if it was just you, you would be rolling a daring engineering. Actually one of my worser stats, that's bad. Hmm. I'll interject. <clears throat> I'm pretty good at extended tasks, but I wouldn't have a focus. No, I've my question is... If I've got was, most of the um, benefits for extended tasks. My question is, if I did extended task, what would I be rolling? That would still be daring? It would still be daring engineering. The difficulty would be a four after accounting for any difficulty reductions, uh, because I would spend the appropriate amount of threat to do so. Um, but it would also have some resistance on it probably resistance to the work track would be something like 12 and the magnitude would be something like four so i mean if if you feel like you're better set up for extended tasks do so the thing i'll say on that though is in rereading the rules uh over the break um you, the active characters talents are the only ones that apply during the extended tasks so for example uh, if I remember in Nick of Time appropriately, you get two breakthroughs instead of one, correct? Whenever you succeed in engineering or science, that's or... part of a extended task, you you score an additional one work for every effect. Okay, so you basically right. have vicious one on your work track. All right, so that would be the only extended task that would apply if you are the one doing the main rolling. Now, if Merrick did the rolling, his talents would apply. But he would have to be the one doing the daring engineering task. He would have to be the task leader. Okay, never mind. Don't ask me for help. Uh, and I have cautious. Uh, nick of time. Intense, intense, that. intense scrutiny and testing the theory. If you know, we have a little bit of lead into this. But I probably don't have a focus since I'm space sciences. Yeah, I would say that your best bet for a focus is either Galen or Monty. Um, basically pulling a hologram and becoming a specialist. Um, but otherwise, it is literally just going to be you or Merrick. I just need to know what you're going with. You know what? I'm, I'm going to try doing it. Uh, but it's throwing this up to you too. Do you want me to do it as a extended task or a uh, straight up roll? Would extended task be daring? It would still be daring engineering, yes. And this is, yeah, so it's engineering. I have a four in engineering. Only an eight in daring. I have a five in engineering and eight in daring, so technically I'm better. Ooh. Uh, let's see. try to see what my other talents are. Um, Hollow Specialist and Cybernex, does those count together? Hollow Specialist would, for sure. Yeah, but not Cybernetics? Yeah, not Cybernetics. Cybernetics, when I think of Cybernetics, I think of, like, prosthetic limbs and board tech and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have... Ancient technology, experimental technology, xenotechnology. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot that would apply for you. She's so the tech person. <laughs> I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it as extended task. Okay. And uh, would I be able to... I wouldn't be able to burn determination on that, would I? I mean, the, the only requirement for determination is you have to have a value that applies. Well, you can always learn something from new tech, from old tech. This thing is definitely 50 years old. Yep. All right, so how are you spending so, your determination? Are you doing two free successes or no? 
I'm getting my two free successes. Okay, so since this is and an I'm... extended task, uh, you're going to be rolling still a Daring Engineering, and I need to see four successes here. I'm What's also rolling the, my uh... challenge die to see if I can get my determination back. Oh yeah, what... remember to do that. What's okay. the total work track? Uh, I'll type it out. So we're trying and to... I got it back. And am I am I able to assist? Yeah. Wait, since I just got it back, would I be able to burn it again? Nope. <laughs> you can only spend one determination per task roll. <laughs> Dang, I can't cheese. In havoc, you're in engineering, so the difficulty is minus one. Yeah. Well, after after reduction for engineering and after reduction for things like that, it still is going to be a difficulty four. So daring engineering focus, and let's go. And what am I rolling for assist? You are also rolling a daring engineering. Question: Can I burn some of some of the uh, momentum we've got to add two more die to this? Uh, that would spend three momentum, but you could, uh, yes. Yeah. You have four. Wait, though, uh, yeah, we got two. Right? No, you got four. Yeah, we got oh, four. Oops. So mind In... if I spend three of it? Go that's for what it. it's there for, man. Uh, for the hologram uh, race, uh, damage to either your program emitter is considered an injury. Fixing damage to, to your software is a first aid task required science discipline rather than medicine, while repairing the emitter is engineering. So what would I be rolling if it's oh. a first aid task? Uh, I believe that's uh, control medicine normally. Let me look. All right. T time to pray. Uh, you, you could, know what? Yeah, you could do a control engineering. Let's say that. Yeah. You could test it on the EAH first, see how it goes. <laughs> so I'm roll. I'm rolling three dice, and let's let's hope. And can I add my determination as well? Uh, no, you cannot spend your determination on two auto successes. You could spend it to re-roll, but you couldn't spend it for two auto successes. Because that's another one of those nuanced rules. The one doing the assisting is limited to one die, period. Like, hey you guys. can't add determination or you can't add momentum dice. And I can't so, Mari re-roll hers with my determination. Well, no, right now, Mari no, no. has five successes. Uh, I have Havoc cautious has... engineering. I auto get to re-roll that, that critical fail. Yeah, I would say, so re-roll that 20. Don't roll another 20. Hey... Alright, how, how do I force That's four, and he bought two with his determination, right? So that's yeah. six? So he's at six. Uh, you just have to manually re-roll everything. Just only roll one instead of three. Oh, that was Galen rolling. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Alright, well, the good news is it's not a complication. So you're at six uh, out of four, so you get two momentum. But I'm now realizing because you spent two moment, you bought your determination die that you should actually have a net total of no momentum after all this is said and done, because determination die counts as an additional die, so it would have actually cost more momentum than you did. Rather than worry about that, we'll just say that you've wiped out all your momentum at this point. Uh, but what matters is that now you are now doing work on the work track, so that is two plus your engineering. For a total of seven Let's, challenge die. One second. Are you saying we're at zero momentum or just zero earned? You are at zero momentum total. All right. All right, so seven challenge die. Mm-hmm. All right. Now you could give me a threat to reroll those four zeros. But at the moment, you would be doing five work because you have Vicious one. Uh, but you have two resistance on this as well. So you would be doing a grand total of three work at the moment. Um, I would be able to do this again later on, correct? Right. So oh, the whole yeah. point of doing the extended task is it literally just takes time uh, in this case. Uh, and complications are what matter. So if you get a complication, bad things happen, but just doing three works isn't necessarily bad. It just means that you're taking your time. Can um, Havoc use the determination she just got back? Uh, you wouldn't spend determination here to reroll those zeros. It would either be one momentum or one threat. But since you don't have any momentum, it has to be threat. 
Okay. Uh, I'll just take my time on this. This is interesting. So, uh, you know, as I said before, when I first described it, you uh, crack the thing open, uh, you begin replacing defunct components with brand new ones, and yeah, I would say that this is going to take all of you present in engineering, this is probably going to take you a couple hours uh, to get everything set up. By which point, as we return to the bridge, by which point, uh, the tour has come to an end, and Ensign Karu has brought uh, Leader Prulish to the bridge. And uh, Karu sort of motions around at the bridge and says, And here you are, sir. We come to the final stop of our tour, the bridge. And Prulish kind of looks around, sees Andromeda in the back. And uh, for those of you familiar with 40k, or I guess really Christianity in general, uh, he does the cross or the aquila, whatever you would prefer to call it. And he says, ah, yes, I remember her well. Uh, Captain, I must congratulate your ensign here on a very thorough tour. To- ah, very thorough tour. She was quite the lovely tour guide. Yeah, very well. I'll make sure I put it in her uh, in her APR for this year. Very good. So, Captain, I'm curious, after seeing your ship, it, it occurs to me that... Uh, your mission to take the Dorhini home, sorry, uh, Andromeda home, uh, would you like assistance with that? Uh, sure, what kind of assistance are we talking about? Well, uh, of course I know not the greater granularity of the details contained within the cache, but uh, with your permission, I would take Andromeda, of course it's her decision as well, uh, I would take her back to my ship. She could interface with the data cache, and then we could decide on a greater plan from there. But, uh, he says as an afterthought, but if I understand the situation as Karu has explained it to me, I believe that we would be able to cut off considerable years in your journey by using our Graviton Catapult technology. Hmm. Well, first of all, uh, and I'll turn to Andromeda and say, uh, Andromeda, do you have any objections or questions as to possibly going over there and seeing their database for yourself? Well, after reading or rather listening to Commander Morgan's log, and she looks very pointedly at Commander Morgan, I believe it is for our best interest that I get whatever data is in that cache. It, it sounds like it was enough to not only start what could have been a religious war, but uh, enough that it could tell me all the answers I've been seeking for the past decade. Hmm. Very well. Well, I see no objection to the first part of your uh, suggestion there, uh, Prulish. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd be happy to uh, uh, to provide means of Andromeda getting over to your ship. I could take her in my personal shuttle, but if I read your kind properly, would you like to send someone of your own, not including Andromeda? Yes, mainly as a escort. Uh, since we did make the promise to see her home, I would feel better if she's on a foreign ship that she at least has one member of my crew. Very well. Specify who it is, and it will be done. All right, and uh, I'll turn to the XO and say, XO, uh, looks like you're on That's probably for the best. Take any other two members you see fit, if need be, and uh, the mission is yours. All right. So at this point, uh, Prulish uh, and Morgan and Andromeda, uh, you guys head down to the shuttle bay. And I would say maybe about five to ten minutes after their shuttle has left and they're on their way back to Prulish's vessel. Uh, hey, one, quick, one question, Dave. Yes. Uh, uh, Morgan, did you want to take any other crew members with you? Um... There, there's only room for one, unfortunately. Yeah. So. Okay, so there's a size limitation. Okay, yeah. never mind. So about 5 to 15 minutes after they're on their way back, 
Uh, Merrick, I would like you to roll me a reason science, please. Difficulty two, and the ship will assist with sensors science. I'll take okay, ship. someone can roll. I'll uh, roll for the ship. Merrick, yeah, I got it, it ready. My ship. <laughs> Said sensor science, right? Correct. Do I have a focus? Uh, knowing your focuses, yes, you do. Very nice. You get two momentum. So, Merrick, what occurs to you as uh, you're looking at the sensor readouts of uh, the surrounding vessels and of the graviton catapult? Uh, you're noticing that the Graviton Catapult is drawing its energy from the star itself. And normally that wouldn't be a problem, except for the fact that you're detecting that there is an imminent coronal mass ejection, which if you're not familiar with it, basically is a very large and very powerful solar flare, or in Star Trek terms, it is a level six seven ion storm uh you don't know how that affects the uh muad vessels but you know that the adiona is rated for up to a class eight ion storm so think of it like a hurricane um the adiona could withstand a a class four and this burst is maybe a class two or a class three i understand i know what it is okay uh captain basically um captain there's a signs of a coronal ejection about to form that will exceed the limits of our shields in this ship i suggest we uh evacuate where's the closest position you could suggest to take the ship uh just any distance away and i'll give a reference and confer with iha all right so iha kind of uh, looks at the available and then i'll I'll add, though, that um, this event, though, based on what we know of Neutronium, I don't know if it will have any adverse effects on the Muat, but perhaps they should be worn. Based on my scans, GM, so far, do they seem to have a scanning technology equivalent to our own or just a very high engineering, you know, as far as, like, the way they travel? I would say that they have rudimentary scanning technology. They are probably aware that some form of ion storm is heading their way, but either they just don't care or uh, they haven't noticed it. Okay, I forward that to you, Captain. Roger. Calm, give me, well, the give me the Muat vessel. All right, so... Uh, on screen uh, appears Commander Tarud again, and uh, Tarud says, Yes, Captain, uh, I understand we have a shuttle inbound for us. Can I help you? Is there something amiss? We've just detected a massive coronal mass ejection coming from your star. By chance, have you seen it on your sense? It's eminent. Ah, yes, uh, that is a bi-yearly event. We are aware of it, yes. I uh, just wanted to make sure the knowledge was pushed out there in case there are any vessels that can't withstand it. Our own ship will be in trouble. I see. In that case, I would offer you a shelter uh, on my ship. I believe we could accommodate the Adiona. Uh, however, if you would choose to seek passage or not passage, uh, seek shelter elsewhere, uh, species that we have made first contact with in the past usually hide above the atmosphere of the second planet in the system. That planet's ionosphere is sufficient to shield us from the star's ejection? It has for other species in the past, yes. And I think at this point, IHA would get the data from Trude and says, it, it looks all right, Captain. Uh, we would be blind for the entire duration of the ion storm, but I don't see any reason why we couldn't withstand it if we were in the ionosphere. Okay. Uh, how far is the shuttle from docking with your ship, uh, uh, Cap? Uh, he kind of glances off to the side and says, it has just docked. All right. Sir, if you could uh, uh, 
extend uh, to the escorts there that we're going to take the ship into shelter and just to stand by until we uh, until we can come back from after the coronal mass ejection. Very well. And stay safe right. out there, Captain. Sure thing to you too. Uh, would and I, I figured you've already bounced this signal to any other ships who may not be capable of detecting the C. Oh, of course. Yeah, I would think that if Taru doesn't do it, that either yourself or Merrick or Iha would do it. Okay, so the public has been taken care of. Then I will turn to Iha. Uh, Iha, set a course, best possible speed. All right. So, uh, as the, the Adiona gets into position, uh, we'll just sort of cut to theater of the mind here. Uh, Morgan, uh, you know what the inside of a Muad vessel looks like. Uh, you've been here before, in a sense. So you know that they are taking you to what used to be the shrine uh, on the ship. And you see that it's still kind of a shrine. But the main difference is that is it doesn't have as much, uh, shall we say, um, religious iconography, I think is the proper term I want to use. Um, so when you get there, uh, the few Muat that are there uh, sort of give reverence and deference to Andromeda. Andromeda begins to interface with the technology. And it's right about then, right before the coronal mass ejection happens, that an alarm begins to sound on the Muat ship. And back on the Adiona, right before the Ion Storm completely kills your sensors, you're detecting what appears to be an energy life form uh, about the size of a sovereign class vessel uh, materializing from a tear in subspace. Oh. Well, I'm immediately going to inform uh, Prulish and just tell him that it seems like there's uh, something big out there. And it's well, coming... that's the thing, is that you don't have contact with the Adiona at the moment. Oh. Okay. You just well, all you know is that there's an alarm sounding. This this could be your very worst worst nightmare. I see. So I'm here. Al so just to be clear, I'm here in the room while Andromeda is interfacing, but correct. I still have access to these sensors. Uh, no, you do not have access to the sensors. The only ones that know about the energy life form are Merrick, the captain, and anyone on the Adiona. Oh, I see. You just, all you know is that Andromeda started interfacing and an alarm started to sound. So oh, okay. you might start okay. getting flashbacks to what happened the first time <laughs> yeah. it happened. Yeah. Okay, that, well, that clears it up for me. All right. Then I suppose I'll just ask uh, what's going on. Uh, so Prulish uh, kind of looks around. He goes over to a terminal and says, Oh. It appe remember that species I told you about that wasn't exactly pleasant? What's that species for? Yeah, looks like they've shown up again. Well, how do you, is this ship able to adequately defend itself in case of an attack? Uh, our weapons never had any effect on them, but kind of the same thing applied to them. Uh, none of their weapons even put a scratch on our hull, but I do not know how your ship would fare. Well, considering this hull is made out of neutronium, I'm pretty sure we're safe, but the ADN is most definitely in trouble. Is there any way that you can render assistance? Uh, I mean, we can certainly try. And it is at this point that I leave a question to you guys as players. So, there's one of two ways we can handle this. Um, we can do the ship combat tonight, uh, and we will basically wrap up at the end of ship combat. Uh, so maybe about another 30 minutes or so. Um, or, what we can do is we can put the ship combat to next session, and I will have more content prepared after, uh, so that it will be more of a, a full session then. Um, I, I bring this up because I had only planned but so much today because I didn't know how this whole time shenanigan thing would play out with Morgan. So which would you guys prefer to do? I broke the timeline too hard, so I also broke our timeline of, the, of our game and planning. I'm sorry. Well, no, I mean, it's one of those rare situations <laughs> where I <laughs> run out of material and it's a good thing. Yeah. So I'm... I don't know, which, which would you guys prefer? 
I'm down with doing the ship combat tonight. Okay. Yeah, we if we knock that out, then we don't have to worry about picking up in the middle of it the next session. Okay. Sure. Can All we right. take a break first? Yeah, I was going to say, what we'll do oh, is yeah, we'll, absolutely. Uh, let's take a 10-minute break here. I'll get the space combat set up, and uh, we'll knock it out. And that way, when we start uh, next session, we'll be at the end of ship combat. So yeah, let's uh, let's take and, a 10-minute break, guys. And Game Master, um, I yeah, was working up? on IHA while I was distracted, so if you could open up her sheet, we'll review things on her as a group in, during the break. Uh, yeah, I'll take a look, but I'm going to use the restroom, uh, as we BRB. All right, so I'm going to be BRB. You guys can keep doing whatever. But ten minutes starting now. All right, captain's in the head. Yeah, too bad, uh, these guys don't have transporters. That would have been a very, very nice thing to have. There's a way out. I already thought of one. So how many more Anthem codes do you have? Or is Galen gone too since he's muted? Is he here? Uh, I just assumed he was, but he's muted. So I guess yeah, he's he muted. Gone. I don't know, I'm scared about Anthem. I don't want to blow 60 bucks on it. Can't wait for this uh, original Bioware storytelling. Oh, you mean when they wanted to do KOTOR 3 and EA was like, nah. <laughs> yeah, like that. EA, I'm sure it's just... I, I wonder how Anthem is going to turn out. Is it going to be a poor man's destiny or something to overpower destiny so no one remembers it because it's way worse? <laughs> you don't want scuffed, uh, you don't enjoy a scuffed destiny with somehow even less story than Destiny 1. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Anthem's just going to be a Warframe mixed with Destiny, but loot boxes <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Like I, I'm sure there's gonna be something. There ha there has to be something. But like just looking at pictures, I see a lot of Destiny inspired stuff, and then. Ugh. I'm back. Welcome back. Wolfdog had a question. Mm -hmm. question. How many more handsome codes do you have? Oh, uh, I should still have two more. Would you like one? Uh, I don't have the space for it, but if I did, I would try. Uh, and we know they're starting to download um, today. I don't know if Origins got yet, though. How long is the uh, free weekend or whatever? Uh, uh, just a weekend, and then it goes... Back up again on February 1st, I believe. Gotcha. Yeah. Does, does the same code work for that, too, when it comes back up? It should be. Oh, well, uh, for February 1st, that's just an open demo, then. So everyone can access that. Yeah, Wolfdog's still got to download GTA. You wonder. Yeah. <laughs> How you liking it so far? If you've played it, or you not played it yet. I don't know anything. I don't keep up with it. Uh, well, no until Friday, unfortunately. They're just doing the preload now. I'm scared. I don't want to invest in it. It seems like, a I I've invested in two EA games recently. Andromeda and Battlefront 2. That's over $300 gone. And drama I enjoyed. I mean, I enjoyed it, but not enough to finish it. <laughs> I think I got like three or four playthroughs of that. Yeah, that's cool. 
As long as I get as much hours as I spent on the game, I'll be happy. Or um, enough enjoyment out of the price I paid for it. I've been having that problem lately. I'm just not finding enjoyment in much of any video games. Yeah, I, I got into a slump like that for a while, too. I think the, like, the last game I enjoyed was Final Fantasy XV. Like, truly just devoured that game. Okay, I can finally talk now that I've got everything situated. Alright, yeah, let's take a look at IHA. Yeah, I'll let the group consensus nail it down in you, you know, as far as the final options for focuses and talents, and then you can look at her numbers. Uh, as long as it adds up to 56 for attributes and... Uh, what division is she? No, it officially? doesn't. I gave her numbers right now based on NPC, and I didn't add race or the extra few to get to 50. Okay, yeah, so add enough attributes to get her to 56. Well, and... why, don't you, why don't you just open her and... Well, I know, kinda... I'm, I'm staring at her. What I'm saying, though, is since she's your character, you're an alum officer, you should be the ones making the decision, not me. And she only gets six focuses, not seven. Right. I listed more than what she would need. I just wanted people to kind of pick, you know, let's have this one, this one, this one, and this. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Well, let me let me do the math for you so I know how much you have to add here. I did the math. We have 51 right now. Yeah, okay. So you need to add five points to your attributes, and it looks like three to your disciplines. So decide where you want them, guys. I'd say the captain and Morgan lead it off. Um, how about how about we bump up some uh, the daring to an eleven, and probably bump up insight by one, and. Reason by one. Okay. And her. And uh, another two, I think, other... left. I'm sorry, I cut you off. And then the other numbers for her uh, department stuff. You're editing it, right, GM? No, I thought you guys were adding it. I wasn't touching I'm... the sheet at all. I didn't oh. touch a sheet, but I'll add it. Daring to okay, go ahead, Morgan. You edit it. Insight to a 9, and I said recent to an 8, I think. Yeah. So she needs three more in the con command stuff? like. Yeah, so she needs three more disciplines. Go ahead, Morgan. Might as well bop up con to a 5. Um... Uh, also, it looks like you were missing one attribute point. Oh yeah, we are. That's not. That's not fifty-six. I was just. I just made that. Uh, I mean, control isn't a bad idea, or a daring up to twelve, whichever you feel is really better in your situation. Yeah, we might as well put Daring up to 12. It's here now. Okay, then I listed more than enough focuses, so pick six of them. Unless you have another idea. Looks like you need two more in disciplines first. Assuming I can math properly. Yeah, you need two more disciplines somewhere. She's effectively our lead pilot now, correct? Correct. That's why she's being set as a full character and not a supporting character. And I would um, 
we're an experimental ship, right? We're not an attack ship. So some of them I listed were kind of offensive based. You might want to skip those. But yeah, pick six focuses. Let me put us back on uh, back on that screen a little bit early, and I guess I'll open this up on uh, on this screen so people can see what we're doing. Let's... I'd say take Starship Recog from her. Leave that for the sensor operators. Yeah, the captain can decide on the focuses, and I'll think about two other disciplines. I yeah, I mean, how's that sound? You. Your disciplines are good. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so you need six focuses. The only one I see that she doesn't really need is Starship Recognition. Okay, remove that. Done. And um, talents, four of them. I just went through the book and picked all the con related ones, so you guys just pick four. Uh, let's There's leave the more. bold con off. There's also more in the command book, too. Yeah, bold con and attack run. Yeah, I picked a couple of them that were in the command book. Let's say you guys remove bold con and attack run. Uh, attack run's probably not this ship. We're not a weapon ship. Yeah, then bold con means she's generating threat. Or she could take cautious con. Well, no, I'm trying to get rich. She's supposed to have four talents, correct? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you could take cautious con instead of bold con. No, no, what I'm saying is bold con is written in here. I'm eliminating it so we have four instead of six. So we take off attack run and bold con. Leave her with evasive, precise evasion... Starship expert and efficient. Okay. Well, the, the first talent that you get is always in the basic list. So you probably should take Cautious Con then. I'm down with that. Then you got to remove one of the other ones. I mean, I would recommend just get rid of, get rid of, ah, getting rid of Starship Expert. I mean, I don't think it's ever come up in any of my games. All right, done. Yeah, she doesn't have uh, starship identification. Wait, so let me just put them back. Yeah, so edit bold con to uh, cautious con. Remove attack run and spaceship expert. And values, I guess we can kind of come up with later, or you got a couple in mind? Uh, values will come up as needed. Okay. So she sounds like she's pretty set now. Yeah, she's set to be your helm officer for this combat, and you guys can mess around with it later if need be. All right, All right. somebody making those changes? Okay, somebody I just did, did it. it. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, so uh, we're going to start combat. Uh, I think, is everyone back? Is anyone not back? I'm here. Galen's here. I do have one question for you before we get into the combat. Yeah, what's up? We're in the shadow of this planet, right? Yep. So we're not experiencing the radiation. Nope. Are we literally in a shadow, or can does uh, the shadow? I, I guess explain? it would help if I actually put the aura on, so you could see the aura. Uh, no, let's see. What I what I specifically mean is that the is it act like a shield, or you know, so anything behind the planet, further back away from so the sun, is still. So you should see now a yellow aura around the planet token. Yeah. Uh, as long as you are within that yellow aura, you do not suffer the effects of the ion storm. If you travel beyond that yellow aura, and I guess I should also make it clear, your sensors do not penetrate that yellow order, or aura. You have to go outside of the planet's influence to see beyond that, or to um, basically really get a bead on anything. Um, if you are outside of that aura... Every single turn, not round, turn that you act, I get to roll two challenge die. 
and it is going to sap away power for every single effect that I roll. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get things started. Oh, w one more yes. out of character question: uh, Are we able to main? Uh, we don't have any means of electromagnetic communication, including subspace. Yeah, everything at the moment is disrupted. Yeah, CMEs oh. are a, a big deal. Like, if we had a CME here on Earth and it was at the wrong angle and at the wrong time, we would be sent back to the Stone Age. Oh, no, I'm quite familiar with the CME. I'm just curious what kind of communication means we have available to us. Ah, uh, you maybe got laser, and that's about it. Okay, so we still have laser communications. Yeah. As crude as it may be. Cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're going to start uh, with this uh, unknown, quote-unquote, Species 4 ship. Uh, you guys don't know what's there, so it's going to kind of just creep... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just we had uh, indication that it appeared though, right? Nope. You got no idea it's there. You're just you're just having a good old time. Yeah, the other ship knows we don't. Yep. So that's where we're going to turn to Commander Morgan. Uh you have just been told that Species 4 has shown up again. What would be your uh, recommended course of action to Prulish and or his crew. Uh, well, since we have new, since we have a neutronium hull, I would imagine that the danger to them is minimal. Hmm. So I'm going to request that they take a position to defend the Yedonia and to contact them immediately about the incoming. All right. So for them, uh, they are going to be rolling. Uh, let's see. They're basically going to be doing a open hailing frequencies roll. And I apparently did not put their stats in, so I will just roll it manually. Alright, let's see what we got. Uh, oh, complication. Not good. So, good news, Adiona. Uh, you do get a narrow band transmission from the, uh, lead ship, the lead Muat ship. But it's so badly garbled that the only uh, words you're able to pick out are Species 4, and everything else is static. So that's their turn. And it is now your turn to do as you wish. That would help if... There we go. In either ship, right? Uh, no, no, it we, would be uh, the ADO's it, turn. PCs go first. No, so PCs don't have to go first. I thought that for the longest time. Um, it's whoever the GM decides to go first, but it is the AD owner's turn to act. So any player character, any supporting character, just remember that each action is a specific department, and every department can only act once per turn. or Sorry, not once per turn, once per round, unless you want to take additional difficulty. Yeah, I remember. So yeah, what would you guys like to do on the Adiona? You've just got a type band transmission that says uh, Species 4 and a bunch of static. Yeah. Just a reminder, there's only two people on the bridge that even heard of Species 4. Mm -hmm. I wasn't present and neither was I. And the captain doesn't know who Species 4 is either. We didn't exactly get an exchange of information. I got two actions I actually wanted to ask about. One before this fight started, but... Uh, if I have... Out of character question. If I have mm -hmm. the science department do a check to change the... Uh, to change an advantage for the ship, would that take an action from... Uh, from for science? Well, what would be the advantage you're trying to create? Uh, try to bring online metaphasic shields to deal with the CME. Oh, I see. Um, I would say you would have to spend the two momentum, but it could just simply happen. Okay, so that would not take a turn? No, I would say that the turn would be, uh, spent on something else. 
that you could have enabled metaphasic shielding prior to getting into the situation. But that that's... even with metaphasic shielding, you're you have no idea about what's going on outside of that yellow aura. Well, yeah, but I was just saying, in case we had to move the Adiona, I would want to know if we are capable of using metaphasic shielding, and if possible, to put that plan into action on standby so we could turn it if we need it. Yeah, yeah, so all you have to do is spend the two momentum you have, and that happens. All right, I wish to do so. All right, go for it. So then that leaves the question for your actual turn in Starship Combat. What would you like to do? Okay, so we d we still don't have any sensors other than speech. We still don't have any data g giving us any positional data, correct? Correct. Uh, that part of the complication was is that only words got through and barely any of those. So we yeah. could try to clear up communications or we could try to clear up sensors by screening out the um, neutrino burst. It's neutrinos, I assume. Yeah, Am I assuming that, that the direction of the CME is directly on this map south of us? Uh, it is coming from the left of the map, sweeping to the right. Okay, so we're we're within the ionosphere then. Okay, yep. so okay. So so if we go to the right, we'll be in the tail of the solar body. And that's my first extinctive move. If we have to leave, is to go out of that side since that's where the tail is. We'll still have some additional shielding, but uh. any suggestions from the bridge crew? Well, we don't know what yeah. the situation is. Um, I mean. Why would we react? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly. Our senses are blind. We don't even know what's going on. So uh, if it, we engage metaphasic shielding as a backup, other than that, we pretty much just sit idle and okay. stay I yellow. Think the only th I think the only thing we can react to right now is the uh, communications try to clear it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that then. Let's have the science officer try to clear up, or science or comms, whoever's... Well, probably science since that person is actually on duty, so we have a better shot with the science officer trying to clear. Yep. All right. So Merrick, uh, this is going to be since. Let's see. Let me let me check here. Uh, I would say that this would be kind of a reverse, or actually no, there's intercept. Uh, so this is going to be a insight engineering, assisted by the ship's communications and security. And this is a difficulty two task. Inside engineering difficulty two. Um, spatial phenomena. Uh, uh, yeah, and it is assisted by the ship's communications and security. I'm dealing with spatial phenomena, right? Yeah, Storm. yeah. All right, that's three successes already. Let's see if the ship gets you any more. Someone got the ship, please. I got it. I get it. That was what? Sensor science? Uh, communications and security. Yeah, that'd be sensor security, right? No, communications. Should be calm. Uh, I'll keep reading that as con. Alright, so, uh, hey, you get a momentum at least. And yeah, with that level of success, you now have can, positional data of Species 4. Can I? Can technical expertise reroll that? Uh, yes, because it is the ships. You may reroll the ship. Reroll the ship. Roger, rerolling ship.
Oh, complication. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Uh, so complications going to be that uh, you do get a read on uh, what's going on with Species 4, but the complication is going to be that your communication system completely shorts out. Like, it's just too much data, too much going on, so you are essentially flying radioless. But we did get one good sensor hit, correct? Yeah. So Sensor hit or communication hit? You basically decoded the garbled transmission. Right, okay. So you know where Species 4 is, and you know the that communications, they're coming, but Communications you... is now garbled, correct. or burned out. Yeah, it's it will need some someone to come up and fix it. But what matters is that it is now species four turn, and they are going to lock onto you guys and fire. So let's roll them. Well, the good news is that apparently they rolled nineteen, sixteen, and nineteen. So very powerful beams uh, made out of what appear to be anti protons. Uh, sort of sear past the Adiona, but don't quite find their mark. So that would be their tactical action. And we turn to Morgan. Uh, you there on the, uh, I guess we'll just say it's the Rama Maven again. It's it's the correct Rama Maven. Uh, what would you like to do or advise? Well, at this point, um, it's still considered to advise closing in on the ship, but I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't attempt to open a channel with them to, to try to get them to cease hostilities. Okay. Uh, certainly, they will open a channel for you and let you talk. So what are you, what are you saying in your opening hail? Well, I'll just say, attention, hostile ship. Well, like I said, we're on the Rama Vaven now, right? Uh, yes, you are. Okay, well, I am Commander Lucas Morgan. Uh, speaking on the... Well, I don't really want to say on the behalf, but... Speaking speaking with the grace of uh, the crew of the Rama Maven, um, I humbly ask for you to cease hostilities and s power down your weapons and stand down your vessel. Otherwise, we may be forced to take a uh, drastic. All right. Uh, roll me a presence command. Difficulty five. So you have one momentum. You have your determination. You I also it's an extended task. I understand. I also do have, I guess, the talent to trying to defuse the tension. Okay, then so, your difficulty would be four. Okay. Let's go try this out. Okay. So let's let me see how many uh, red <laughs> I get here. Uh, okay. So that's. One momentum, so I get two threat. And yeah, so that is a total of five successes. So yeah, the end result is is that uh, you know, you send out your uh, you send out your sort of warning and probably because it's coming from a neutronium ship that could quite literally careen through species four and not care. Uh, species four. Uh, when it comes to its turn, will do something. But you don't know what that something is yet. And it is the Adiona's turn. And I would say that the Adiona did not get any of that hail because it burns out its communication system. Alright, uh, let's see. Let's have... Ha uh, hey, Havoc, think you can jury rig our sensors? I think Havoc BRB'd. Okay. Recommend evasive action. Yeah, that's coming next, but let's get the sensors jury rigged for now if we can. That'll have them up until the end of the fight as long as we don't take any more additional damage. Alright, Havoc's back. 
uh, have it call on station when ready. Or if you if you yeah. can just type if you can. You're lighting up, but we can't hear anything. All right. Oh, Havoc. bloody! Heard that? Yep, did hear that. Have yeah. see if you can jury rig the sensors for. Communications. Oh, that's or is, oh, it's so, comms, not sensors. Yeah. Sensors are blind right now, but it's communications that are front. Yeah. All right. So. Blind. What would yeah. the check be for that? So uh, it's really just a matter whether or not you're going yourself or if you're sending uh, damage control teams. I'm getting there myself because if they're willing to call me, that means something went wrong. All right. Uh, you're going to then roll a uh, control engineering uh, difficulty two. All right, so you get a momentum. And yeah, you basically go to one of the main junctions of where the uh, comms array interfaces with the rest of the ship. You give it a good kick, and hey, you got communications back. Literally give it a good kick. Yeah. All right, GM, just for clarification, that's for, what, one combat term before it goes out again, or until we take damage? Uh, no, that is, uh, you've repaired it, so if you get breached in communications, it'll be a problem, but otherwise, you're fine. Okay, yeah, I know there's a, th there's, I, I know there's a limit of, like, a scene or something, right? Um, that's if you jury rig. Yeah, that's what I was asking for. Oh. But he did a, just did a fix? He just did a fix, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Either way, that's good. So, uh, Species 4, with, uh, Morgan's sort of, um we'll say edict uh i'm going to spend some threat here uh what they're going to do is they're going to start to turn away so they're going to get about maybe there and their port side phaser or their port side anti-proton beams are going to fire one last time before it goes to warp all right and that is enough so the adiona uh you are going to take a grand total of I can math today. Uh, that's going to be nine damage. And your scale three, yeah? Correct. All right, so you're taking six to your shield. And that means you also get a breach. So let me roll where... You know what? No, I'm going to tell you what the breach is. Uh, the breach is going to be to your engines. And Havoc, since you're our main engineer, I'd like you to roll me a challenge die, please. A single challenge die? Yep. Oh, dear. So... I should have rolled... No, species no. Species 4 leaves, unless someone wants to chase them. But in their parting blow, you guys are losing containment on your warp core. And that's not good. I'm going to immediately put that at number one priority and yell into the comms, everyone fix this. All right. And that is where we're going to end the session because I think there's nothing more uh, cliffhangery than a warp core, imminent warp core breach. Uh, so just for clarification, we still have five points of shield remaining, correct? Correct. And okay, you good. mechanically have suffered a impact to engines. You have suffered one breach. Yeah, but I marked that, that challenge already. die, if it was an effect, was going to be, yeah, you lost containment. All right, cool. But yeah, uh, let me end the stream there. We'll still, so players stick around for a little bit. But for anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, hopefully you guys had a good time with our opener. And uh, we will see these guys in two weeks. Bye-bye.